Hello and welcome to the Bad Take. My name is Tamara. And I'm Himal. So this is not one of our usual episodes where we talk about a topic that we like. We just thought of uh, talking about some truly random crap today. Mostly meta stuff about the podcast and I guess about us. And the reason is we just got some new recording gear. Shout out to my friend uh, Pramukh from Pyramids. He gave us his audio interface and Himal got us two mics. And thanks, we Dad. set the whole thing up. Yeah, thanks Himal's dad. We set the whole thing up and uh, we are in business. So Himal, tell us a bit about yourself. <laughs> oh, we're doing that? Okay. Oh yeah, someone, a friend of mine actually uh, told us that we should maybe like introduce ourselves. Right. I mean, I don't know. Is that is that something podcasters usually do? I mean, I guess not, but maybe just do a two minute origin story, I guess. Uh, I think we already covered that on the first episode, right? No, I mean about you. <laughs> wow, okay, <laughs> origin story. Huh? Okay, uh, I'll, no, I'll, I'll just say How that... Okay, no, 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 I'll just say that I, I, I am a journalist, I write right. for a living, and right. um, this is just something fun that we're trying out right. for the yeah. owls, basically. Yeah. Okay. You? So, I have a small business that I run with my friend. It's not small. It is. Yeah, that's about it, basically. I'm I'm probably the most boring person you'll meet. He's not. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> is that all we have to say? Yeah, that's all we have to say. Enough about ourselves. Okay. <laughs> so, um, so, yeah, the two two episodes out so far the p- yeah. the feedback has been uh, pretty encouraging yeah uh, yeah and uh, we are open to new ideas so if you if if you guys have any thing any any topics that you'd like us to cover give us uh, give us a shout on twitter we'll uh, we'll definitely think about it yeah we will definitely think about it i mean uh, i think we will have to be comfortable enough with the topic to actually right. dive into it but yeah. uh, we can take suggestions and see what we can do with it we do have a, a half-baked list of topics that we want to cover thing is like we, we both have full-time jobs so it, it's yeah. not easy to like really like sit down do and research. Do, uh, do research yeah. and like you know so it's it's we just what we do is we just like meet here like cu- a couple times a week at Tamara's office and we just have like a quick brainstorm and they just dive right in. That's what usually happens. There's no script yeah. or anything. Yeah. So, uh, I mean, today there's there's nothing. We don't even have like a. We we just like we just literally set up the equipment and we sat down and here we are talking. Yeah, and talking about feedback, Himal. I think uh, so. The first two episodes were about uh, two topics that we mostly agreed on most yeah, things. Yeah. Yeah. So some that's okay. That's okay. We yeah, I mean that's yeah. okay. I mean it won't be the case for all the topics that we discuss, right. but I guess people found that a little. I don't know. Boring. boring Is that I what guess? you're saying? Oh yeah. my God, are we boring? No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I, I, I saw. I saw. I saw this tweet. Uh, I think you're referring to yes. that. Uh, yeah. Someone suggested that we talk about things that we don't necessarily agree on. Yeah. I, I can see how that would make for a more interesting and more lively discussion yeah. i guess i mean uh, what i said on twitter was like just give us a little more time it's just been two episodes yeah. so we'll definitely stumble upon some topics that i mean a lot of topics that we don't agree on um so yeah we are uh, we are can looking you, forward can you to think that. of anything like that like uh, off the top of your head yeah i guess capitalism i think oh right right <laughs> right yeah yeah that old chestnut yeah <laughs> um yeah, but I I think we should maybe save that for later because yeah, it's it's like it's literally two episodes like let's yeah give us some time yeah. Um, but uh, let's talk about something else. Let's talk about podcasts that we like. Mm, sure. What so do you listen to? I mean, so I don't I don't know if I've said this before, but uh, like most podcasts, uh, I listen to I start listening them listening to them thanks to you. Really? Yeah. Uh, so I I uh, first started listening. I guess this was an accident. I saw some article about podcasts. I think mm-hmm. somewhere on the internet. I did have a podcast app on my phone, but I didn't know what it was for, and I didn't know what a podcast was. Uh, but af- after seeing this article, I just uh, uh, just search for some topics I was interested in and and subscribe to. 
I think I subscribe to Team Ferris, uh, Star Talk. That's Neil deGrasse Tyson's podcast. All oh, right. Uh, and a couple of others. Okay. And I found that really, really interesting because, unlike watching a video, for example, you don't have to give your full attention to it. Right. So my commute back then was really long. It was like. Uh, in total about three and a half four hours per day okay so during that commute i could very comfortably listen to a lot of stuff and absorb a lot of information mm-hmm. so i like that part of it a lot and then i just kept exploring like i found more podcasts then i uh, posted something about podcasts that I, a list of podcasts that i liked on facebook and then you and harley oh, and some that. others yeah, commented yeah, yeah, yeah. and then i checked out those podcasts yeah. And now I think I have, like, I've subscribed to about 20 or 25. I mean, I don't listen to ev- each and every episode. I can't. Right, I right. don't have the time. But, uh, I mean, I pick and choose. And when I see a title that's interesting, mm-hmm. I uh, go in and I listen to them. So how long has it been? Like a year? It's been more than a year. It's been, it's been more than two years. Even. Right. Yeah, two and a half, okay. I guess. Yeah, yeah. I've, I've been listening for about three years as well. Right. I I also kind of like stumbled upon it I think, yeah. Uh, yeah I, I I remember reading a couple of articles like I mean, I was just like what I did was I mean I I listened to I think uh, Free Economics or something and that was that was probably the first one I listened to, and uh, then I just kind of looked I mean I I just looked up interesting podcasts on Facebook and oh yeah there's there's our podcast on Reddit which has uh, some good recommendations, if anyone's interested. Uh, just uh, let me just talk about what I listened. I'm just going through my uh, right, my right. app right now. Um, let's see. You you listen on Apple Podcasts, right? No, actually. I oh, right. You used... Uh, use, yeah, Overcast. Overcast, right. So if you're on uh, iOS and you want to listen to podcast, I would actually recommend Overcast. It's, uh, I mean, Apple podcast is okay, but I use this mostly because this has more speed options. Right. So I, I listen to some podcasts at 2x, some at 2.7x, depending on like how fast the host and the people in the podcast talk. Yo, that's ridiculous. That sounds really fast. How, how, yeah. how do you listen to that? How are you able to like retain anything? I mean, I can retain stuff. I mean, it's when you get used to it, it's not a problem at all. Like, so I, I didn't go from 1x to 2x overnight. Okay. It was like a gradual process. Uh, but now the advantage is I can listen to more podcasts d- within the same time. So, uh, But I have no problems with ret- retention. Did you actually end up saving a lot of time that way? I mean, I mean, it's not about saving time though. It's about listening to... It's it's about just getting through the list of my oh podcasts. Right. It's, it's about consuming as much as you uh, can. Yeah, okay. yeah. right. Uh, and I mean, I have to admit that uh, I guess maybe I retain 10% of everything right, I hear, maybe right, less. Right. I mean, it's the same. I mean, but for me, it's the does same. But that hinder your book. experience in any way? Uh, I don't think so. I, I, I imagine this is like the, the, this is the audio equivalent of speed reading. Is yeah. It? Okay. It is, it is. I mean, it doesn't really... Like I've heard that I d- I don't know how true this is I haven't right. looked this up, uh, but I've heard that like in speed reading you don't really end up absorbing anything. Okay, I'm not sure about that. I mean, okay. I haven't. So I, I just anything. wonder if that's it, is that also does that also apply to like podcasts or any any audio medium that you listen to like right. like two x or three x? I actually haven't noticed that. I mean, uh, so like when we talk, right? When yeah. I, I mean, in the past two episodes, like I brought up some examples. Hmm out of the top of my head, all those were like stuff I heard in podcasts. Right, right. So, those like small trivia stuff, I will retain anyways, I think. Right. So, it's it's still about maybe 5 to 10% of all I hear, but right. uh, I don't think that would change if I listen to them slower. So, you listen mostly on the bus, I guess, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. me too. How, like, I mean, for me, a problem is that like, I mean, you know how loud our buses tend to be. Yes. There's, there's, there's the music, there's yeah. the screeching conductor yes. and, and it's difficult to concentrate sometimes. True. How, 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 how do you manage? So you need to invest in a good pair of <laughs> earphones. I, I have, I think, um, I, I, I like to think my headphones are pretty good. They're right, good right. in-ears. They're pretty but solid. But there's still a problem? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, I mean, sometimes like 
the roar of the bus engine or the, or the, or the bass of the, or the mm. treble of the speakers like it's so loud that it kind of drowns oh, everything okay. out yeah yeah i i mean i have had problems with that but i can't really think of a day where i just did not listen to the podcast because of that you know what i mean right right like i would listen to them anyway and hmm. i mean i i'm mindful of the loud bus engine and all that right but uh, you know it has it has not uh, caused me to not listen to podcasts i mean i try to listen as much as i can too but it's just sometimes you know you got to feel for your eardrums you know yeah yeah, yeah. so anyway um Yeah, so let let's talk about a couple of podcasts yeah, that we really yeah, like. Yeah, let's just uh, let me just quickly go through this uh, my app. I I am on Android, so I use uh, the Podcast Addict app, which has which is which has been pretty good for me so far. I hear that uh, Castbox is pretty good. I'm not sure. Android? I haven't used oh, it. Android? Yeah. Oh, okay. No, no, no. This this is the only app I've ever used. Right. Um so let's say I um I am a regular listener of uh the how stuff works network i listen to mm. stuff to blow your mind right which is like i mean a similar setup to i guess what we have here two guys uh, talking about like uh, this particular series they basically like they take topics that are kind of like you know out there like right. aliens and human intelligence and uh, space travel and things like that and they spend about like an hour to hour, hour and a half just talking about it and looking at all the research that's out there on it and it's a uh, it's very interesting stuff to listen to uh i think you listen to uh, stuff you should know about stuff you should know yeah, yeah. so the this uh, how stuff works network has a lot of podcasts um as far as i know and like they have one about history one about current trends or something so how stuff works is his website basically which has articles about interesting stuff and they started their podcasting channels about 6 7 years ago i think and they have long running podcast a couple of them i listen to stuff you should know it's also very similar to stuff to blow your mind but this is like not necessarily stuff that blows your mind but interesting stuff so it's just two guys having a conversation about Um uh, yeah so the last one was about how commercial jingles work. All right. And there was uh, another one about how game shows work. Game shows. Yeah, how circumcision works. Right. All that. So I mean th- there are no l- there are no um limits to the topics that they talk about. It's it's about everything. How do you think these guys like know so much? I mean they just do they spend all their time I mean it's it's not necessarily they know all that stuff right they just research they just research okay on I mean it's their job yeah they I mean this is what they do full time right yeah they th- this is what they do for a living so that makes it easier yeah i suppose uh another one i listen to quite regularly is uh, you are not so smart right i listen to that too it's by um what's his name macrani someone david, david macrani yeah. yeah it's a uh, it's a show about psychology and uh, self delusion and 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 uh, i mean if you want to lis- if you want to learn about uh, your biases yeah yeah like stuff. your biases and uh, and uh, logical fallacies and things like that yeah. this is the go to podcast for me anyway it's a uh, yeah, it's pretty good it's very uh, interview heavy yeah yeah and uh, sometimes the audio quality is not that yeah, good yeah because i think a lot of those calls are conducted via yeah. skype yeah i think But I mean the content is really really good. Yeah. That's some really solid content. And but if if yeah, if phone in interviews are not your thing, you might want to skip that. You got anything? Yeah, I regularly listen to uh the Ted Radio Hour. Okay, what's that? That's a podcast by NPR. So right. NPR has has yeah, yeah. also has a lot of podcasts right. that they do. I listen to one, I think. Right. It's called the Fresh Fresh uh Fresh Air. Fresh Air, yeah. yeah. That's the one. So I listen to this and this is basically so every week they choose a topic right like for example the impact of social media mm. and they aggregate the some uh, TED talks that have been done on right. that topic and they feature clips of those TED talks and they talk have s- short interviews with those uh, speakers Okay that sounds interesting That's pretty good 
So you want to talk a bit about free economics? I think we we both listen. Yeah, we yeah. both uh free economics. I that too I think I listened after your recommendation. I don't okay. remember though. But anyway, it's a, it's a pretty interesting podcast about. Again, it's supposed to be it's not just economics. I mean, it's right. not boring economics anyway. It uh, looks at the economic aspects of different things. For example, uh the presidency in the US. Right. and what what kind of so there was a recent episode about uh, does the president hold any real power oh yeah i remember that one yeah uh, something like that mm-hmm. and then there was one about uh, there was one about tipping in restaurants mm-hmm. and how it creates an inequity right, right. with the, yeah. uh, the workers the servers who work uh, at the front of the business and mm-hmm. the back office people stuff like that right i started listening to the podcast before i read the books oh, okay Oh I've I've never read the book. Right, uh, you should. It? You should. They're pretty good. Okay. Oh it's more than one, is it? Uh yeah, there is three or four books. Okay. They're by Stephen Dubner and Stephen Dubner and Stephen Levitt. So right. Stephen Dubner is the He's journalist. the host of the podcast. Yeah. Mm-hmm. He's the host of the podcast and Stephen Levitt is a economist. Right. And those two guys uh basically combine their strengths and tell an interesting story. Uh, related to uh, an economic principle right 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 yeah with a with a with a slight uh, neoliberal bias i would say so yeah yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah. that might be a problem for some of <laughs> um let's see what else do i listen to gosh there's so many uh so we both listen to hardcore history oh yeah dan carlin he's fantastic uh and his uh, one episode runs to about Six, five, six hours. Five to six hours. Yeah. Did you listen to the Blitz, the one about? Uh, yes. Yeah, yes. that was that was great. Fantastic. Uh, but this guy puts out uh, one episode for two months or three months, maybe even longer. I think yeah. he, he really takes his time. Yeah, he does the research yeah. really well. Yeah. And yeah. It's very well made. Like it's it's just one guy talking about some some historical right. incident or a set of incidents, but it's never boring. Hmm. Uh, yeah pretty interesting stuff the the episode on the on the on the i like the one about the celtic holocaust oh i i couldn't listen to that one right. that was about um, about how the 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 celtic people right were massacred yeah. by uh, romans Rom- by the romans yeah. right yeah, yeah 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 so basically i mean it's it's basically like a deep dive into history and uh, if you if you're a history buff that that is one episode one sorry one pod- podcast you should definitely check out uh, another one on history that i like to listen to is called our fake history mm. it's uh it couldn't be more different from dan calling this this is a guy who um, who kind of examines popular historical myths uh one example of the top of my head would be whether or not william shakespeare ripped off somebody else's work there's this enduring Myth, right, or let right. that like Shakespeare was not who he claimed to be, right? Okay. And so this guy like like over a couple of hours he like he 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 looks at all the all the all the possibilities of who he rea- might have been really, and whether 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 or not is whether or not there's any any uh, merit to this claim. Right. There was another episode recently uh, about Rasputin, okay, uh, who is wrapped up in all kinds of yeah. uh, myths about his uh, sexual prowess and things like that. uh so it's pretty interesting stuff uh one episode of his that i would really l- recommend is uh his uh his study of the history of rock and roll music he he like really deconstructs the theory that rock and roll music originated from from the black community uh and uh, if you if you want to learn more about that uh, this is this comes highly recommended i should check that out yeah yeah because I, uh, so i was under the impression that rock and roll has been for the lack of a better word ha- white washed yeah it has been i yeah. think yeah i mean we, we always talk about cultural appropriation and things like that yeah. but th- this is one area in which that is clearly the case right i think uh yeah okay. so any any other yeah. podcast you recommend so i would also recommend tim ferris okay if you are into Uh, so who is Tim Ferriss? What does he like? Tim Ferriss is this guy who basically, uh, wha- what he he calls himself the human guinea pig. 
okay so he does all kinds of experiments to you know improve his um, strength his productivity and all that stuff uh, but the interesting thing about think about the podcast that i find is he interviews all these people like mm-hmm. from different walks of life there are people from the military athletes chess yeah. prodigies uh writers filmmakers right. all kinds of people and he dives into you know the the habits and the processes mm-hmm. they follow mm-hmm. to do what they do right um and he tries to break them down or so like it's like a kind of like a podcast version of seven habits of successful people something like that yeah okay right but so some of these people like they have weird eccentric habits right. but there are so many things that you can actually try out okay. for example uh, i got into meditation mostly because of his recommendations okay uh yeah stuff like that uh i think uh, sam harris also harris also does a lot of meditation he right does yeah. that yeah yeah but but bef- so before i started listening to sam harris i was listening to tim ferris right so right i actually started listening to sam harris because of your recommendation yeah yeah, yeah. I, I mean i, I knew about the there was a time when i used to listen to him right right religiously yeah i i, I, I knew about the guy i've s- i had seen some youtube clips with his debates and stuff yeah that infamous clip with uh, ben, ben affleck, affleck yeah. yeah and uh, these four horsemen debates right, with right, hitchens right. richard dawkins and daniel dennett all okay. that stuff i've seen i i actually didn't know that he had a podcast uh, but after that i started listening and i've been a fan since something about that guy's voice that <laughs> makes you want to punch him though right <laughs> no just me okay so uh, so that's one of the podcasts because he talks really really slowly right i listen to that around 2.7x yeah depending on the guest so if the guest is a fast talker i slow it right, down right yeah uh, i mean the guy has an, it's an amazing vocabulary but i know jesus christ like sometimes it it just i mean for me it just goes over my head yeah 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 i know i know but it, uh, same 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 for me yeah then there's a uh, infinite monkey cage oh yeah Another i listen to that one sometimes that's with uh, brian, uh, cox. brian cox right yeah, yeah and so uh, brian and cox is this british theoretical physicist right and, and there's a comedian yeah, yeah he does the podcast with a comedian and uh, and with a panel like right, so right. they choose a topic yeah uh, related to some kind of science right uh and they take in some people like experts on the topic mm-hmm. university professors and yeah, the yeah, like yeah. and they have a discussion about right. it and there's always another comedian or yeah, an yeah, actor yeah, yeah. someone to yeah, make it yeah. a fun discussion as well and i i think that has worked in most of these science podcasts uh if you take star talk for example mm-hmm. which neil degrasse tyson does he also does that with a comedian yeah yeah so the comedian brings a a little light hearted touch to it right right that helps keep it grounded yeah. right yeah so i mean although neil degrasse tyson is a bit of a science communicator so he can he he doesn't he knows how to like yeah i mean yeah. he can explain anything right. to anyone <laughs> yeah uh, that's another guy who i'm like heavily disillusioned with right i used used to really like him a lot i don't know then some i don't know he comes he comes across he comes across as like a knock off carl sagan to me which mm. is okay yeah so what what i do with i mean i i i hear what you're saying and i know that most people will have that reservation but what i do myself is i kind of uh, i am uh, i try to be voluntarily oblivious right right about of that part of their personality or yes, whatever yes. and i just try to take uh, just what they're saying what, yeah, right yeah exactly. okay the no yeah that's that's, that's that's obviously a very good attitude to have yeah and like it's not like i mean i wouldn't i mean i did i said this last week but i wouldn't call myself a fan but i right like the like what the guy does right right yeah so i mean he's popularizing science there's nothing wrong with that yeah okay yeah. if you are into startups and business or looking to start your own business you should listen to gary v uh, he's an entrepreneur like he is a he's a he's not this sexy silicon valley kind of entrepreneur that you right, hear right. about he's the old school hustle kind of guy okay like work as much as you can and that will uh, bring you the rewards what what's the podcast called it's called the gary v audio experience the guy's okay. name is gary venachak right so he uh, 
he came to the US from Russia as an immigrant and then his father worked really hard at build okay. this business and he took it up and then he built his own business so there's a story and he always talks like really uh, practical stuff right not the regurgitated startup advice that you hear from yeah, silicon yeah. valley yeah. i mean he is involved in silicon valley he invests right. in companies and stuff but uh, he do talks real stuff right so that's good if you're into business so since you you're running your own startup yeah okay this is aside this is this is a complete tangent here what do you make of the startup culture in sri lanka startups are n- right now startups and entrepreneurship is sexy right right everyone wants to do it because uh, it's cool and all that how i think is now i actually don't like to myself or my co-founder paitra we don't really like to identify as a as a startup we just say that we are a small business because it's a business it's a practical and if you really think about it old school business we sell t-shirts and we don't really want to identify ourselves as entrepreneurs because that gives a very different vibe uh, people think you know you are you are this eccentric person who i don't know it, it has a really different vibe to it that i don't like uh, and i don't like the fact that people want to get into it just because it's cool right now uh and they talk about you know quitting their jobs and starting their businesses and is it cool i know it was a couple of years ago is is it still it's still it? cool i mean mm. in, in sri lanka it is okay yeah so i quit my job to start this but i only did that because i had two other income streams right. so i was thinking practically uh i you know didn't put everything i had into this that would have been a very screwed up scenario and i would have ended up with nothing but that didn't happen because i had a plan so yeah if you think i mean it's it's really good if you think about starting your own business and making something of your own i applaud you i will support you if i can uh but don't just do it for the sake of i um, don't just do it because it's cool that's what i think and there's all these businesses that uh, there was this really nice article there are so many startups that don't really start mhm so people think if you have an idea you can find an investor who will put in some millions to your business and you can make some nice money and exit in 5 years or whatever right so that's the wrong reason to get into business i mean nothing wrong with making money i want to make money uh, yeah i mean we all want to make money but and and the other other misconception people have is people will give you money just because you have a cool idea right i mean anyone can have ideas it's just it's about the execution how you carry out the idea and how you if you can make a uh a practical sustainable business that's that's the real achievement not the idea so yeah you have to be able to pull it off i'm suddenly reminded of something you you tweeted a couple of weeks ago about uh people asking for discounts yeah. i think uh, yeah you had some things to say about that yeah yeah so there's all this pe- i mean nothing wrong about asking for discounts uh, it's it's like this right there are two kinds of people there's one kind they come to you and ask do you guys have any discounts for any products that are running right now or, or special promotions that i can make use of and if we don't have any then we just say sorry we don't really have anything and they understand and they just they either buy the stuff anyway or they leave I mean that's okay. I mean they're just looking out to save some maybe save some money or get a good deal or whatever. I mean I do that too. I look out I I wait until Black Friday to buy my stuff. So I mean it's nothing wrong with looking yeah, out for I discounts. Yeah, I don't anything on Black Friday. <laughs> okay. But there's the other kind uh so they will come to you, they will uh ask for the price of something and when we tell them that price, say for example this there's a guy who wants to buy two t-shirts mm-hmm. and he will say what the two t-shirts are and he, when he asks the price i would say it costs for example 2000 rupees and this guy goes in and asks me uh, can you give this to me for 1750 so they, they would just pull prices out of their asses and demand that we give stuff to them at that price for some reason i don't understand why that i that i find that really toxic <laughs> so what do you propose 
Uh, people will always ask for discount right i mean yeah i mean so but there's two different scenarios right. so if you if you are checking whether there's a discount going on mm-hmm. that's one thing and demanding something at a at a lower price than it it sold for is another thing it's it's haggling which i don't like right, right. A, a product is priced uh, at a certain rate mm. because of several reasons right the yeah, cost that yeah. goes into right, making course, it yeah. and all that stuff and it's basically the value that you assign to that product so if you don't see that value in that product don't demand that for a lower price go and find something else some good insights from tamara here <laughs> for would be startup <laughs> entrepreneurs uh, i mean no uh, i'm not qualified to give anyone advice it's just stuff that i've gone through that's all i can say yeah tamara's startup journey has been a pretty interesting one i think i mean those of you who know him can all agree where now this sounds like an interview right like <laughs> I'm, i'm interviewing you let's let's not do that <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay but, but, but that's enough about me i've seen that you are into photography quite a bit is that a, just a hobby or yeah it, it's right? really just a hobby i, w- I wouldn't right. i would not call myself a photographer i'm right but you have a camera and all that Uh, like that that doesn't make me a photographer no i know i know i know <laughs> but uh, Every, everyone has a dslr <laughs> these days yeah but your photos are like pretty good man too they are yeah they you are. think so i thank you <laughs> i i try i try they they they're okay i think but then you yeah. you had a, you got a lot of praise from all these cosplayers as well so. i mean i yeah i think i think yeah one of one or two of them and you d- right, you yeah. uh, you did a you covered a fashion show i think like oh god yeah like like a, i think like a year ago right only because uh, i found this uh, guy who was uh, renting his uh, equipment like right. he, and uh, i basically call him and rented his lens and just showed up and took some pictures right i di- i didn't make any money out of it or anything i, di- I didn't those pictures weren't published anywhere except on my blog uh yeah it was it was an interesting experience yeah i had a history with photography as well i yeah. mean not so <laughs> there was this one time i uh, borrowed a camera from a friend okay. i didn't know anything about operating it i right. just knew how to press the button right and change iso and stuff like okay, very basic okay, stuff right. and then i went to uh, peta main street okay and uh, there was this newly opened uh, gold center where they had all the gold merchants right right station um, they the the old uh, what do you call it c street the hit tv there yeah, yeah yeah all those people have now moved to this new huge mall right. sort of structure and i i i went and talked to those people and asked them about what they think about this new building coming up and whether they want to move there if not why didn't why they didn't want to and all the stuff and i took photos of them oh, wow. and i <laughs> uh, i did what i called uh, i think a photo story on my blog So you're like an amateur journalist. <laughs> that's so what I want. I mean, okay. wow. that's what I uh, so I I I I had I wouldn't call it a goal, maybe interest in slight interest in becoming a journalist. Okay. For some time I don't have that now, but I did. Why not? Why not? I don't know. Maybe because I'm quite comfortable with what I'm doing right now. Yeah. So I don't think about that. But I mean, it, it could have been there's a pretty good chance if I didn't get into business and right. all that stuff now I would have been I guess a writer or a journalist I mean, you still write I do but that's like very basic stuff for my blog no I mean stuff. you have your blog and you have I think the bear appeal blog also no not really bear appeal doesn't have no, it's, no, it's no, I mean your content you, just you, my you write a lot of it I think right yeah I mean the stuff that we post on social media and all that right. but that's that's not No but I I I really think you should pursue this as I mean right. in your spare time at least. Yeah I do. I mean I try to write as much as I can because I like doing it right. not because I want to make a career out of it or anything. No Even because I I think I I actually really like your writing style. I think it's oh, very thank approachable. You. Thank you. Uh and I I know you're a very busy guy. Yeah. But when you have the time I I think you should it's something you should definitely consider. Yeah. So uh because I have a lot of other stuff to do I but I I'm doing right now is I try to journal. Okay. So every night I write something about the stuff that happened 
on that day or what i'm planning to do the next day or whatever so like maintaining a diary right yeah yeah, yeah. i mean it's just free writing i i don't i mean there are no topic is out bounds okay so i just write what comes to my head i mean it's completely private it's where you are only okay it is i don't publish any of that anywhere right i just do that because uh, one thing it does is it, it i mean when i do that enough it will improve my writing along yeah. the way yeah and the other thing is i enjoy writing stuff down so you meaning you enjoy the process the process okay yeah. right right what so what's like that. what's journaling like i mean is that like cathartic to like be able to put all your thoughts down on paper is that i wouldn't make any such strong claims but okay. i mean i have heard that some people have that effect right. and there have been studies uh, right. on that which have not been all positive i think for me personally i don't think about that much i just want to i just i just enjoy it okay but why is okay why then is it um, why is it a private journal as opposed to a blog if you're just in it for the writing <laughs> well there's private stuff in it all oh, right okay <laughs> okay i mean it's just anything right so right. i i st- write whatever comes to my mind so yeah there's a lot of stuff that i can't publish so it's like a free flowing thing you just yeah. start and you don't stop yeah. you just keep so going so what i what i do is uh, i actually i started journaling about a year back Okay. I did that uh, every day for for about a month or so then it just really fell into the wayside. Okay. And then I wanted to start again and keep going. So what I did was I set a target for myself. I said I will write for 10 minutes every day mm. and I will write 250 words within that 10 minutes. Okay. So what I do now is I just start writing and when I hit 250 words you stop. I you finish the sentence, yeah. And then I stop. So there's no like there's no coherent flow of ideas right. or whatever in that it's just a mess. Okay so I mean you're writing for yourself right? Yeah. There's no audience there's no one to no. like judge you for your grammar or anything like that. So no. are you but even so are you still like conscious of it in the back of your head are you like Yeah you catch yourself formatting it a certain way. I uh, sometimes yeah. I do that. Yeah yeah. I I saw this recent uh, our mutual friend Aisha she had posted an article she's in nepal now i think right aisha uh, nazim right yeah. yeah and she had like written about her first day or whatever okay and at the end she had said uh, she just wrote it down didn't format or anything and i read that and i was like i can't write like that without formatting <laughs> so i have a long way to go yeah but you yeah, know i know what you mean I, i sometimes i take ages to yeah. write like like one paragraph sometimes I like sit down and I'm just like i mean usually what i do do is just like i mean i st- I, i start and then i kind of like don't stop until i just hit like a dead end and mm-hmm. after that like i have to like basically get up and go for a walk and come back and like start again right for me the hardest part has always been starting that first sentence getting that first sentence down has always been the hardest part it's 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 a huge struggle to come up with something that is catchy enough but also doesn't really you know Uh, like two weeks ago for example i had to write about the jana rally right and uh, it was like three in the morning <laughs> i didn't know what the fuck to do and i was on a deadline i i had no i mean i i knew what i wanted to say but i hadn't really like i didn't have like a structure to it in my head and then the first sentence just kind of came to me and it just kind of like went from there right so that that's my writing process right, right. i'm i'm sure that's I, d- i don't know if that's how it is for other writers mm. it's very uh it's very debilitating in that like that first sentence takes a long time sometimes and that can really mess 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 up your process so if any writers out there would like to offer some advice please i'll be very grateful so i've never really written anything on deadline so i don't know how that experience is but does that limit you in a way or like how does it being on a deadline yeah i find that i perform better under pressure right. okay i think okay. i'm just one of those people you know when i have more when i have time to relax i i just like mm. just end up on twitter or whatever you know i just <laughs> right. yeah uh, do you know this guy uh, tim merban he has this blog called uh, wait but why sorry wait but why oh ah, yeah 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 um, he does all these wonderful i think wonderful he has a podcast too if i'm not mistaken i'm not sure okay but the website like it's right. it's just wonderful long form writing okay and he does 
really good research about whatever topic he writes he wants to write about and he puts things in a really easy way to understand and he has a nice uh, ted talk where he talks about just this like procrastination and how deadlines mm. affect you and all that what he says is uh, in your head like it's a it's a story that he has built up to explain all this there's a monkey so this is what's called the monkey mind is a mind that wanders everywhere and right, doesn't right. really let you focus on anything so the monkey messes up with the uh, the process in your brain and yeah. the monkey just wants to have fun mm. and go on twitter and you know okay. look at look at youtube videos and all that but when you are reminded of the deadline this panic monster wakes up yeah, yeah. and he he scares away the monkey <laughs> and like it's a nice story that you should watch that you video. know i can definitely relate to that yeah. <laughs> so yeah what do you, what do you, i, I mean, am that monkey <laughs> <laughs> his point is i mean that works fine for stuff that you have deadlines for but right, right. there are so many things in life that don't have deadlines yeah yeah so you need to like figure out a way to get through those that's the point of his ted talk but the story is like really fun Yeah, I mean I don't know if it's related to this but yeah. uh, since you brought up this monkey uh, like do you find that you have noise in your head sometimes? Oh yeah. Yeah, I don't, I don't mean voices. Yeah. I mean like like this like a lot of clutter, right? Yes. Yeah. And yeah. okay, so how how do you declutter your brain? So if it's like it if if it gets to a point where I can't focus on anything at all, I just stop. Okay. Whatever I'm doing and take a deep breath or whatever. there's this phone there's this app on my phone which helps you breathe oh yeah what's it called it's called oak oh right your meditation app yeah yeah, yeah. so that has a breathing um, element right. as well uh, so i just do, i do that sometimes mm. i don't know whether it it has a profound effect on me but just stopping helps sometimes take a break and yeah take a break walk downstairs grab a cup of coffee and then come back whatever no but you you mean when you're actually working and you're trying to focus on something yeah. right yeah that's not wha- how i mean i mean right. like when i when you're just going about your day to day stuff and there's right. like okay. all this noise in your head it could be like a song that's stuck in your head oh yeah I it could that. be some nugget of information you read somewhere a tweet you saw yeah. somebody's facebook update yeah uh, or like yeah, a comment yeah. thread that you I were involved in and it's like you're like yes. you brain is like like your your neurons are firing constantly yeah, uh, yeah like yeah i know i i know what you mean but i don't know whether i've tried to stop it and even if i have what i did to stop it i wouldn't remember but, but does that like bother you a lot lately yeah i mean i don't really consciously think about it right but uh, sometimes i I'm, i'm like acutely aware of it like going on like in the background almost like it's okay. just God, I probably sound crazy now. It's not like that. it's not like I'm hearing voices in my. You don't have auditory hallucinations. No? <laughs> like lots of so much clutter in your head, man. Right. I mean, yeah. I, I I guess a lot of it is thanks to the internet. Most yeah, information and, overload. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Like, so yeah, much yeah, that makes useless sense. Useless junk in here. Yeah. In your head and and like we're bombarded with information like all the time. Right yeah. Throughout the day, right? Twenty-four-seven, yeah. pretty much. And it's it's not easy to like always. like you know be at peace yeah and, and this is the same reason why why things like meditation are cool now and yeah, sexy yeah. Medita- meditation is pretty sexy now isn't it yeah it is yeah. and everyone's talking about it i meditate i wouldn't really make any claims on how useful it is i just do it because it helps me it helps me unwind but i haven't felt any effects of it in other areas of my life maybe because i haven't been doing it enough but i'm not sure how, how often do you do it like every day for like 10 minutes that's it okay. but i i do that just to unwind and, and what, what kind of take a break is this? this is just uh, focusing on your breath okay what the buddhists call uh, anapanasati bhavana yeah okay. yeah is it the same thing really uh it is actually yeah. okay. you just focus on your breath like you think about inhaling and exhaling and think just about that and the proper way to do it is so when you think about that you will have other thoughts flying around yeah you will think of other stuff but you have to be able to be a spectator to your thoughts oh. and just push them away okay. at, at at a whim right i can't do that 
How, how do you mean aspect it to your thoughts? That's, that sounds very interesting. You don't actively try to get rid of the intrusive thoughts. Instead, no. you just kind of let them be there and you kind of like yeah, you look at them like, yeah, yeah. okay, you, okay. You're, you're an outsider. You become yeah. a spectator. To yeah. okay. You're an outsider, oh. basically. Right. I, I can't do that for the life of me, but. That it sounds fascinating. Though. Yeah. Like, I mean, that's the perfect, uh, I mean, that's the, the end stage of it, right, I think. Right. And all these meditators like, uh, Tim Ferriss, Sam Maris, that's what those guys uh, right. say is really helpful because if you can do that, then you when, th- when you want to focus on something else like a work or whatever, mm. then you can bring that same same expertise to that. Right. Uh, so I haven't been able to do that. Okay. I just meditate because it's calming, I yeah. think. Do you find that it helps? Yeah. Especially when... Like on the day to day? Yeah, especially when it's been a long day. Right. And... I mean, you're, you're just sitting there doing nothing, thinking about your breath. Yeah. It's a very freeing thought. So you actively focus on your yeah. exhaling and inhaling. Yeah. Okay. So that's the, I, I think you said you were Yeah, interested. I was interested. I mean, I, I don't know that I have the patience for it, but right. I, I, I yeah, would really like th- to try it out. That's what I thought first. I don't, I don't do it every day. Some days I miss, but now I think I have a streak of 28 days or whatever. Okay. So that's good. I mean, you use that app, right? Yeah, Oak? yeah. I mean, you don't have to use an app. You can okay. just put on some uh, s- like soothing music, like right, a right. waterfall or a right. stream or whatever, and then do it yourself. So there's there's guided meditation and unguided meditation. Yeah. I can't do unguided meditation because then I yeah, I will. Yeah. I, I don't think I could. Yeah. Either. I I tried uh, Headspace. Right. Right. Uh, I I mean, I didn't like really get into it that much. I just like tried it like a couple of times and I kind of gave up. Right. So maybe I should uh, get back to it. Yeah, you could try. So yeah, so we talked about, uh, what did we talk about? We talked about podcasts, we talked about meditation and... We talked about startups, startups. all kinds of crap. Yeah. Before we go, please, if you have any, uh, if you guys have any suggestions for topics that we could talk about at the here at The Bad Tech, please, by all means reach out to us on t- Twitter I guess mm. that's the easiest way yeah you can tweet at uh, Tamara at Master Tamara and uh, me at Himal KK alright so uh, catch you guys next time <laughs>